Module 6, Introduction, Naming Oxoacids. Recall oxoacids were compounds that contain hydrogen, oxygen, and some non-metal X. And the key to being able to name oxoacids correctly is being able to identify the oxidation state of X. Let's look at an example of an oxoacid. This is nitric acid. To, be, to know that this was nitric acid, I need to know that the oxidation state of that nitrogen right there is plus 5. And here's how I figured that out. Hydrogen in these oxoacids will always have an oxidation state of plus 1. Oxygen in the oxoacids will always have an oxidation state of minus 2. The sum of all the oxidation numbers within this compound must be 0, since it's a neutral compound. I had plus 1 minus 3 times 2 for a total of minus 6, that told me the nitrogen had to be plus 5. So knowing nitrogen had a plus 5 oxidation state here is what allowed me to know that this was nitric acid. Okay, and here's how I knew that. Once you're able to identify the oxidation state of X, you need to know what the ic acid is for a given X, and that's going to be tied to where X is on the periodic table, specifically what group is X in. So let's run through what the ic acids are for the various non-metal groups. We'll start with group 3A. So on the periodic table, we're looking here at group 3A, and the oxidation state for the ic acid when X is in group 3A is going to be plus 3. Here's an example. H3BO3. If we were to identify the oxidation state of boron in this particular compound, plus 3, minus 6, boron must have been plus 3. The oxidation state is plus 3. The ic acid here is boric acid. Go to group 4. The oxidation state for the ic acid when X is from group 4 is plus 4. An example is H2CO3. The oxidation state of carbon here is plus 4. That makes this the ic acid in the series. This is carbon ic acid. We go to group 5. We just saw an example, HNO3. The oxidation state of that nitrogen, as we saw earlier, is plus 5. The ic acid for this particular group is plus 5. That made this nitric acid. When X is from group 6, the oxidation state for the ic acid is plus 6. Classic example here, H2SO4. The oxidation state of that sulfur is plus 6. That makes this the ic acid. This is sulfuric acid. So we've seen for a group 3AX, the oxidation state for the ic acid was plus 3. Group 4, plus 4. 5, plus 5. 6, plus 6. We get to group 7. And the oxidation state for the ic acid is plus 5. Okay, so this is the exception to what we've seen before. When X is a halogen from group 7A, the ic acid in the series will have an oxidation state of plus 5. An example here, HClO3. The oxidation state of that chlorine is plus 5. That makes this the ic acid. This is chloric acid. Okay, so we can identify the oxidation state of X. We know what the ic acid is for a given X. And once you can identify where the ic acid is, knowing what the oxidation number is relative to the ic allows you to name the compound. So if we have an oxidation state for X that is two more than whatever the ic acid happened to be, I don't have the ic acid anymore, I've got the per ic acid. If I'm two less than the ic acid, I have the us acid. 
if I'm a total of four less than the ic acid, so two less than the us, I have the hypo us acid. Okay, so let's practice using some of these rules. I'll just make up some oxo acids here. Let's see if we could use the rules to name them. Okay, to begin, we'll identify the oxidation state of, in this case, that nitrogen. Hydrogen's plus one, each of these is minus two for a total of minus four. The oxidation state of that nitrogen must have been plus three. Okay, recall where nitrogen is on the periodic table. Nitrogen's in group five. The ic acid has an oxidation state of plus five. I'm not at plus five, I'm two less than the ic, which made this the us acid. This is nitrous acid. Let's try another one. HiO4. Again, we identify the oxidation state of, in this case, iodine. Minus 8, plus 1, that must be plus 7. Iodine is in group 7, so this is a halogen. Recall the ic acid for the halogens was plus 5. I'm 2 more than the ic, which made this the per ic acid. This is per iodic acid. Let's do a couple more. H3. PO4, I need to identify the oxidation state of phosphorus. We'll see that is plus five. Phosphorus is in group five on the periodic table. That makes this the ic acid. This is phosphoric acid, HClO. The oxidation state of that chlorine, plus one. Okay, this is a halogen again. For the halogens, the ic acid has an oxidation state of plus five. I'm four less than the ic, which made this the hypo us acid. Specifically, this is hypo chlorus acid. If you're able to name these oxo acids, you can readily come up with the name for the daughter anion produced from that acid. The per ic acid's daughter ion is a per eight anion. The ic becomes the eight, the us became the ite, the hypo us became the hypoite. Again, let's look at a few examples. Let's say we had compound KBrO3. I need to name that compound. Okay, this is an ionic compound. I'm simply naming the ions. That's obviously potassium. What is BrO3 minus? Okay, let's run through the algorithm in this way. I've identified what the anion is. Let's make the parent acid for that anion. I'll simply add as many hydrogens as I have negative charge. Now I'm going to name that particular acid. Okay, the oxidation state of that bromine is plus five. Bromine's a halogen. So this makes this the ic acid. This specifically is bromic acid. If this is bromic acid, the daughter anion is the eight anion, which meant that was bromate. The name of this compound is therefore potassium bromate. Let's do one more. What if we had CaNO2? Okay, obviously this again is an ionic compound, calcium. That anion is NO2 minus. The parent acid of that daughter anion would be HNO2. The oxidation state of that nitrogen is plus three. That is two less than the ic, which made that the us acid. This was nitrous acid. Us acids produce ite anions. That anion is nitrite, which makes the name of this compound calcium nitrite. 
Learn to master naming compounds by completing the exercises associated with Module 6.